Okay, in this video, I want to share my tips for your financial success in the year ahead. It is a topic that comes in um, in terms of questions in varying ways. People want to know how to earn more money in their year ahead. People want to know how to maximize their profitability or their revenue in the year ahead. And there are a couple of key areas that I want to touch into that have made an enormous difference in my life, have been fantastic for some of the clients I've worked with. And if you're watching this now, I want to share that benefit and value with you. So there are a couple of stages. The first thing is you look at your income. How do you maximize your income? The second is, how do you provide yourself with a sense of security? Because we operate differently when we are caught or tight financially. And so how do we give ourselves a bit of space, a bit of room to breathe, a bit of room to be ourselves? And I guarantee when you have that, you will operate differently and your career will grow as a result. The third then is what do we do with our excess cash? How can we invest it? How can we make money from our savings? How can we create an additional revenue stream from that? Really key. And the fourth then is looking at our tax efficiency. So let's dig into these first, first four areas and help you then from there. The lovely little tongue, tongue twister. Um, so the very first thing is in terms of maximizing your income, there was an exercise that was introduced to me a few years ago and it was so simple and yet so effective. And what I loved about it was that once I became aware off the back of it, once it, it brought my attention to certain areas, it's all, I almost instinctively worked in the background. I loved it. It was like planting a seed and just letting things grow. So what I want you to do is I want you to get a ledger, literally a notepad, and I want you to record your income each month and your expenditure on everything. I want you to record even the simplest things like a cup of coffee. If you make a charitable donation, I want you to take track of it. And as you do this throughout the month, the first thing I lay you bet is even before the month finishes, you're going to become conscious of where you're putting your money. But there is nothing like seeing a ledger in front of you and being able to see, whoa, I spent this much money on coffees. I, I spent this much money on tips. I spent this much money on starters or desserts that I didn't even really need and it raises your awareness and cuts out so much wastage in that as an exercise in itself and so I would really encourage you to do this exercise and I'm not even going to say much more after that because I know that when you do it and when you see the money and how, where it goes in front of you you will immediately speak and take action yourself and that for me as a coach is one of the really exciting things that you help people do exercises that will help draw their attention to areas and help them address them themselves. And that is a really key exercise. The second then is with regards to savings. Now, I'm a really big believer in having, a, having some savings, not too much, but some savings. And so what I'd love to do is, and you may already have this set up, but what I would suggest is that you allocate 10% of your income before you spend anything to a savings fund, okay? And you might be like 10%, whoa, that feels like a lot. But what I'm always amazed by is how we as humans adapt to our environment. And although it might be uncomfortable the first month you do it, after you do that, do it that first month, you won't think anything of it. It's amazing, as I said, how we adapt to our circumstances. And for me, as I said, it's just this automatic thing I do every month. I allocate a percentage of my income straight over to a savings I was about to say fund, but it's actually a funnel in my case. And I'll explain that a little bit more now. So for yourselves, I'm going to ask you to create a savings account. But I don't want you having more savings than you need to allow for, let's say, six months of spending. Six months of your average monthly costs. I actually call this my fuck you fund. And there's a reason. There's a really simple reason. When you have six months of wages in the bank, you will feel so much more relaxed. You will be more of yourself. The, the most unfortunate thing is when you find somebody financially pinched, they can't honor themselves at certain points. Like they can't make certain decisions because they need the money. They can't tell someone to fuck off because if they lose an opportunity, well, they need to pay the bills. They can't afford to lose an opportunity. And so, yeah, as I said, I call this savings fund in my ledger, my fuck you fund. But I'm really conscious of it not being more than six months of money. And the reason being is money in the bank 
has an awful way of losing value because you only earn, well, you'd be lucky if you earned a percent, a percentage of interest when your money is in the bank. And the unfortunate thing about the moment is inflation rates are pretty high. So that means the cost of things is getting more expensive while your money is staying the same in the bank. And so unfortunately, what you can buy in your first year of having that amount in the bank is less the next year. Your buying power reduces. So for me, that's a really important call to have only a small amount in the bank and have an area to put anything thereafter to use and hopefully earn a greater level of interest than that 1%. So we move to the third part of this is having something to do with excess money. So I still maintain that portion or that percentage of my income to savings. And once I've reached my six months of savings, I then move the money into anything excess or over that into an investment fund. And for me, I'm really interested in crypto and I'm really interested in stocks and shares. And they say that, uh, well, sorry, on average, the S&P 500 has grown by 11% year on year for the last 20 years. So, and that's probably a little bit off, I'm averaging, but it's pretty near to that. And you can do that by simply buying into an index fund, which is in a, a, a fund or a collection of some of the top performing stocks in the S&P 500. Um, that's a really simple thing that each month you can buy into an index fund. And hopefully, fingers crossed, your money will grow at that 11% year on year. Um, if you're into crypto, you could uh, buy a stable coin like, let's say, USDC. You could bank it in crypto.com and you could earn 12%. Or you could buy Bitcoin, speculate on the price going up, bank it and earn 8%. Um, so that's a really, really nice thing that like, you know, you have a portion of your income going to savings. You have enough savings to set you up for six months. After that, anything thereafter is going into investments and fingers crossed you're earning over 10% per annum on those investments. That's really, really exciting stuff. And it's lovely. It's a really lovely feeling when suddenly your, uh, your savings, let's say, or your investments are making you money. Um, that's a really beautiful thing when suddenly you develop another very passive income stream. And the fourth thing is get tax advice. This is something that I don't know why everybody once a year doesn't book an hour with a tax consultant to look through how they're doing things and see if everything is being done in the most tax efficient fashion. And with this, I would encourage you to spend as much as you can on a tax consultant. The better the tax consultant, the better they'll be able to look at things. And perhaps it's literally one stroke of a pen or one different way of doing things and they will save you a fortune. So those are my kind of like four little tips. And I really believe that if you kind of master those four, you set yourself up really nicely and you set yourself up far over and above the average of everybody else. So what are they? One, maximize your earnings. Cut out the wastage. Cut out the stupid spending. And draw your attention to what you are spending your money on. You will become so much more conscious. You will get so much more from your money. And I lay you a bit actually as you start to appreciate your, you know, where you're putting your money. You will also as well find yourself not just saving money, but also a little bit more conscious of your time and, and not, not shying away from perhaps charging a little bit more. Um, that's one. Two, set up your savings fund or your uh, fuck you fund and automate, uh, automate the portion of money coming from your income into that fund. Uh, then cap that fund and divert excess revenue or that portion of revenue into investments. And for me, as I said, I've given you two forms, two possible avenues, crypto or stocks and shares. There are so many others. And then the last is get good tax advice. If you do those four in this year ahead, or for whenever this video hits you, you are laying yourself, as I said, this solid, beautiful foundation for your finances for going forward. It will just, yeah, they will make your life so much easier. You'll maximize your earnings. You'll get your money in the background working away for you you will feel so much better off. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. As I said, it has worked so well for me. It's worked so well for the clients that, um, that I've shared it with and fingers crossed it will work so well for you too.